Hey, welcome back to my channel, guys. Today we're going to talk about housing. I'm getting this question all the time about what are the houses like here in New Zealand. So today I'm gonna to overview some of the things that I've noticed over the last seven years as to the differences between the housing in New Zealand compared to the US. Here we go. So if you don't know me, we are a family of six that have moved to New Zealand from the US and have been in New Zealand for seven years. If you are thinking about moving or traveling or spending any sort of significant time in New Zealand, reach out to me at KiwiAmericans.com because I help people move here and get settled. I have an amazing training hub that teaches you everything you need to know about engaging this culture. And then also you can meet one-on-one -on -one with me if you just have questions. So check it out if that's helpful to you. Today, we are going to talk about housing in New Zealand compared to the US. So the first thing, that I'm going to need to touch on and we're just going to get this out of the bag to begin with is the housing in New Zealand is expensive. But the good news is, is that the prices are definitely going down. In fact, I have been renting my entire time here in New Zealand, but now I'm looking for housing. So I am recording all of that information and I will do a video on what it's like buying a house here because let me tell you, it's different. I'm talking to agents all the time. I have no idea what these words are, what this means. So I will be doing a video to help you with this once I've gone through the entire process and let you know. So it is expensive. Um, prices have gone up really a lot in New Zealand. Actually, let me get my notes because I wrote down the average price for a house in New Zealand right now is 991,000, which is just under a million dollars, but that's in New Zealand dollars. So in US dollars, it's like 550,000. In the US though, the average price is 348,000. That's total in the US. So obviously there's cheaper parts and more expensive parts, but in New Zealand dollars, that's 618,000. So there is quite a discrepancy in terms of you know, how expensive a house is, but just like in the US or New Zealand, you can buy a cheaper property, you can buy more expensive properties, but in general, that's going to be your biggest expense here in New Zealand. But what I've talked to a lot of my clients about is that there are some interesting ways of which you can reduce uh, your housing costs. And so there are ways because it is a different culture here, like having a border is very normal. A lot of the houses have outbuildings where you could rent out and then that helps on the cost of your mortgage every month. And so there's there are definitely some options um, that make it cheaper, which I have done myself. I have Airbnb to room or I've had a border stay with me. I've had a lot of things and it helps really reduce the price and you can so you can still have a bigger house, nicer house, but keep your cost down. So there's lots of options, but the number one thing I just wanted to get that out there. The difference is it's quite expensive to buy a house here in New Zealand. The second thing I want to talk about is the heating. Now, I know I've said this in so many videos, but we just have to put out like the big ones. So the biggest difference, I think, for an American coming and buying a house or renting a house in New Zealand is the heating. So the way that they heat their house here, heat pumps, gas heating, fireplace, wood burning, um, electric heat. So it's very different. Now the U.S. is a big place. So how houses are heated is different across the country. I'm from the Midwest. So we are in like below zero weather in the winter. And so we all have furnaces. Like there's no way you could ever get away with. I mean, I guess I did have a house in the U.S. that had <laughs> in the Midwest that had electric heat, but it was not good. It was very expensive. But um, so, yeah. So in general, you're going to notice that people are more comfortable living cold in the winter, like compared to what you're used to in like the US or Canada. But yeah, so be aware of the heating system. So when you're coming here and you're looking for a house, you're renting a house, you're buying a house, pay attention to the heating. Look for central heat. Now, New Zealand is improving immensely. They're putting in rules for landlords um, in terms of insulation levels and uh, some other requirements in terms of heating. So there, it's much better. All the newer homes are much better, but you know, it's gonna take a while to get there because there's still a lot of houses that the heating is, you know, in my opinion, no thank you. <laughs> you know, especially with more people like working from home or being home a lot more often, like that's really gonna matter because it's just, you don't wanna be cold. 
like when you're typing and like having, I used to have like gloves on that had my fingers coming out to type because it was so cold. So yeah, and then, I mean, there's ways around it. You can have personal heat. They have those hot water things like rubber things that they put on your lap or in your bed. And so they have all the things. Or we could just heat our houses, you know, where it's warm. <laughs> so yeah, they're getting here in New Zealand, but I just wanted to point out heating is a big difference. In addition to the heating, another difference is air conditioning. Like I've never seen an air conditioner here. Um, in the US, you know, we have it really cold in the winter in the Midwest and really hot in the summer. And so everybody has an air conditioner, or at least a window air conditioner in a room. So. I'm sure that there's parts of New Zealand that would have air conditioning, so maybe comment below if you do, because I actually don't know this, um, but it's not a common thing because it's just not, it's not a tropical climate, so it's, it's not that hot, you know, like in the Wellington region, you're not going to get hotter than, say, 75, 78 Fahrenheit here um, during the summer, like you're not getting that 88, 90, you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> in New Zealand, and so you know, so there's no need for um, the air conditioning. So I just want to point out that's another difference, air conditioning. Another difference is screens in windows. In New Zealand, they don't have all of the bugs. So there's no screens in the windows. So that was like one thing I really noticed or like a screened in porch. I mean, I think I've seen that a little bit, but like, yeah, they don't have like all the, but they have bugs, but it's not the same level. It's not the, as many bugs. So can you just imagine living without the screens? Like people say, oh, there's annoying, you know, sand flies and different bugs here in New Zealand. It doesn't compare to where I'm from in terms of mosquitoes and just all of the flies and just everything. No need for screens in New Zealand. So it's really nice. You can open your window and it's just like actually, you know, no screen and having to deal with that. So that's a big difference for me. Another big difference between the housing in New Zealand compared to the US, what I've noticed is like the roofing material. So in the Midwest, anyway, in the US, and I think it's different like in California, is asphalt shingles is what generally people use, you know, and they last 30 years or whatever. But here, like if I look, I'm up on a hill, if I look out my window, I'm gonna see tile. I'm gonna see a lot of the roof tiles, clay, sheet metal, you know, more roofing that's more sustainable for a longer period of time. And it looks really nice. You are going to see asphalt shingles here in New Zealand. Not sure if that's what you call them here, actually, but um, they do have them here. But I'm just saying I see them very, not very common. I, I don't know. I'm just looking down and I'm seeing like a lot of flat roofs and metal roofs and clay tiles. And so that's interesting. Just noticing that the roofing material is quite different. Another big difference between the housing in US compared to New Zealand is that every house in the neighborhood is a different style. Like you'll find in the US that they just decide to design a whole development and all the houses look the same. And they all maybe have a couple different colors or some of them have an extra bathroom or but essentially when you're driving around that neighborhood it's cookie cutter like they're all the same and that's one of the things i hate about uh, the us and it's not everywhere but there's a lot of big developments everybody has the same exact house or that you know with some small variations and here that's not the case like in my neighborhood every you go walk by every single house not one thing is the same <laughs> different siding different roofing different style different size different look to it and so totally varies so i can see why you know doing the cookie cutter makes sense for efficiency and getting a lot out very quickly and i'm seeing that more with the new home builds here uh in new zealand but like yeah yeah it's Everybody was like, everything's like a custom design. Everything is different. So, I mean, you do have things that are uh, more cookie cutter, but it's not common. Like I can just look through the whole valley right now and every house is different. All right, let's talk about basements. So in the Midwest, basements are a big thing. Basements are like, if you're in a ranch style house, which is one story house and you have a basement, so you've basically doubled the size of your house. So you have a basement, underground that is just as big as you know the top and it's like you know people make rump rooms and 
you know, bars and like huge, it just adds a lot of square footage to your house. Now, I know that there's states like Texas, they don't have basements, you know, there's all the different weather reasons why people do or do not have basements, but it's not really a thing here in New Zealand. There's a lot of houses that you will enter on, you know, on the ground floor, but then you go down and then like the bedrooms are underneath or, you know, like that, but it's not like talked about like a basement or an extra room. And I've seen, I've walked through a couple houses that have like, extra rooms below but like basements aren't a thing like it's like a whole industry in the u.s like let me build you your entertainment basement and your man cave and and whatever and so it's not quite the same here now this one isn't totally related to housing but kind of what i really like about new zealand because we don't have the harsh winters like i'm used to you have blooms all year now i'm sure parts of the US that's the case as well but like for me like I'm not a gardener let's be honest but I do like to have some and then the US in the mid excuse me in the Midwest it didn't always make a lot of sense because you'd get you'd, the summer would start you would get all your blooms out and then they would all you know just get buried under the snow and you'd have to start all over again in the spring and it just was futile I thought like this is a waste of time but here like all year you're popping up other beautiful flowers and and you know things in season and fruit trees everywhere and it's just really nice and it's to me way more worth it and so like gardening is a huge thing in New Zealand people are very passionate about gardening there's garden tours I've gone on them they're amazing what people are doing and it's because it's something that they can develop all year I used to live in a house where the garden was amazing and it was he designed it in a way where like every month every couple weeks all new blooms were coming up in season so you always had something it was just amazing so I appreciate that about New Zealand another thing that you will see in New Zealand homes that aren't as common in the US are clotheslines like almost every house that I've moved into that I've been to have a clothesline because most people hang their clothes outside uh, and that dryers aren't as big of a thing people do have them you know it's just not as common like it just isn't common like even when you go to Airbnbs they give you you know some pegs to hang your clothes up because like that's where people dry their clothes and so in the US there's lots of like subdivisions that don't even allow you to have those because they don't like the look of people's clothes hanging outside or you know that sort of thing so but then there's places that do have it I'm just saying way more common in New Zealand compared to the US and the last big difference that I'm going to mention today is the appliances so like the houses are just going to be smaller in general and so are the appliances people don't buy food in bulk they don't have the need for these huge refrigerators people kind of just buy week to week um, or day to day and so just smaller refrigerators smaller ovens and and it's all fine you know we don't need bigger isn't always better right this is what we're learning <laughs> and so they just have everything is just a scaled down a bit very efficient you will always have a electric kettle in a New Zealand home which isn't always popular in the US they do have them um, a lot of people will boil water in the kettle on the stove as opposed to an electric one in the US but you always will have an electric kettle in a New Zealand home so that's a distinguishing feature um, but yeah so everything is just a little bit smaller um, and but still really nice you can still get a really nice house here and it's a different style and a different feel but still really good well I hope you enjoyed the video this week please comment below and let me know some of the differences you've noticed or things that you were like I wish they had this that they have used to in the US or things that you really have come to appreciate about homes in New Zealand. I would love to hear it. I will see you guys next week.